I remember Oliver sitting in the uh, library before practice or in between class, just by himself, just studying, just preparing. Oliver is always prepared for whatever the situation is in the classroom, in life, on the gridiron, on the basketball court, and as I said, uh, for a couple of our city championships, Oliver made plays at the end that if they weren't, if they did not happen, if it was not Oliver Luck, we would not be saying that that period had three straight uh, city championships. He played professional football for five years, and then he went to uh, NFL Europe, and he held a position there. He became the athletic director at West Virginia. And then after he fulfilled a few years there, he now is a member of the NCAA. But those are key positions that you wouldn't find anybody but somebody who was very outstanding that would ever accrue to those positions. Uh, my father, Marty Chambers, always felt that Oliver Luck was his ace in the hole. He was that sixth man that could come off the bench, play any position, and he always had a knack for being at the right place at the right time. I think what's distinguished Ollie is that he, he's not a settler. He doesn't, like, okay, I've done this, now I don't have to work anymore. He keeps going for the modules, keeps going for the more. Uh, keeps finding, trying to find ways to reinvent himself, to improve himself, to, you know, to keep doing more and do better. You don't have to be a leader because you, you were a, a screamer and a yeller. He wasn't. He led by example. Everybody knew he was talented. Everybody knew he was exceptional. They modeled him because he was uh, somebody who stood out to them. He doesn't seem to get tired. He doesn't seem to ever get hungry. You know, he's, he, he, he can keep going like the Energizer Bunny. Uh, for example, driving. If we're on an 18-hour family drive to Colorado, he's driving 18 hours straight. And I think he likes to challenge, you know, whether it was working for American football in Europe or soccer in America or amateur athletics, I think uh, he's always got to have a challenge. It's pretty incredible. So he's just a person who really uh, does think about the greater good and how he could contribute back to society, mostly in the roles that he has and how that kind of, I would say, that uh, success uh, flows to other people uh, as well. So to me, that's, uh, that's truly a man for others. He, he's not thinking about himself and his ego and his own success. Uh, he's thinking about how his success translates into uh, success of, uh, of those that he is in charge of in some cases. Even in high school, you could see he had a clear penchant for helping those who were less fortunate. He did service work there, I mentioned the scholarship drive, and he's done these kind of things throughout his career. He always reaches out, I think, to make things better. When he was at West Virginia as AD, he completely revised uh, the compliance regulations for the university. He helped that university get out of a very difficult probation they were on. And this continued, I think, his good work has continued ever since he, he has left Ignatius and left Virginia. I think the intellectual honesty uh, that's demanded by the Jesuits and, and others in St. Ignatius has really helped me enormously in my professional career. Life is about serving others at the end of the day. I'm reading from my father's notes about Oliver Luck, and he said, if you, if you find someone with stronger credentials and a cleaner record than Oliver Luck, he must be Superman. Mm -hmm.